it's been such a relief and such a, a pleasure for me to discover how I can just be more and more myself without basically living my life for, for other people in terms of my ideas about what other people wanted me to, to do or to be or to say or and continually trying to second guess what other people were thinking about me. And um, the way that that's come about has just been through the, the support of, of the Four Mainstays, which is the educational program of Balanced View. And the, the first of the mainstays, it's just a simple practice of short moments of just relaxing completely. And it seems perhaps too simple, or, or how can it be that simple? And yet really directly with all of that thinking about what other people think about me, I, I can put it into practice right there and see what the result is. You know, as soon as I just relax completely and I, I just allow everything to be exactly as it is, that there is this sense of ease, there's this sense of just being able to be myself as I am, allowing all of my thoughts just to do whatever they're doing and recognising that what is fundamental and what I can actually rely on is the vast open intelligence, that the, the space within which all of these thoughts, all of these emotions, all of these physical sensations appear. And that all of them have exactly the same fundamental quality. They, they arise spontaneously and self-release naturally, like a, a line drawn in water, without me needing to do anything about them. So, so in this short moment of complete relaxation, I, I just allow everything to spontaneously self-release because that's what it's doing anyway. So what happens in that is that all of the emphasis that I'd given to my thoughts uh, about what other people were thinking or what they might be thinking or not thinking uh, are naturally outshone in this blazing reality of the wide open nature of intelligence. And what becomes obvious is that I was just living in a complete fantasy world just making up all of these stories about what other people were thinking about me and, and then really focusing in on them and, and making huge life decisions based on these bizarre ideas about you know, what I thought was going to make my parents happy or what I thought was going to make me look good to my peer group or what I thought was going to make me attractive to people that I wanted to find me attractive and it was all just this big story and by focusing in on it and emphasising all of these ever-changing descriptions that they really seemed to be real and they were so real that I did base my life on just these stories that I was making up the whole time and um, so just to recognise all of these data, all of these data streams as nothing but this dynamic energy of open intelligence immediately gives a different perspective on everything. In each short moment, we actually taste for ourselves the freedom of just complete openness. And that openness is actually the ability to respond in a way that is of immediate benefit. And it's such an exciting way to live. I saw that previously, one of the things that had really limited me were all of these ideas I had about, you know, how I wanted to appear to other people, you know, the different ways that I wanted to present myself and, and trying to contrive my speech and my actions and my, my behaviour based on these ideas that I had. And, and just by relaxing and allowing them all to be exactly as they are, they, they naturally settle down and, the, and they lose their grip and their power. And I can see that I can actually just be myself. And, and it's so refreshing. It makes life so easy. But, but more than that, it makes life potent. Because we are then able to respond without the need to refer to any of these contrived ideas about who we are or how we need to behave or the kinds of things we should say or shouldn't say or should do or shouldn't do. And we can just allow ourselves to be exactly as we are. And from there, in my experience, 
this potent benefit just naturally shines forth. The speech changes. We don't speak the way that we used to speak. We become the ones that are the examples of how, as human beings, we can use our speech in, in, in loving but also really powerful and clear and direct ways. The underlying basis for how we use our speech and our mind and our qualities and everything about us is what will be of most benefit. And that cannot be contrived. It cannot be intellectually understood, but it can be very directly experienced in each short moment of the recognition of yourself as open intelligence, as beneficial potency. Not all of these ideas that we learned about who we are and what other people think, and then trying to base our behaviour and our actions on all of these learned ideas. The mind is already wide open and clear. It's never been anything else. So in a short moment of complete relaxation, you, you touch in with that open quality of mind. The mind is like a, cloud, a, a clear sky. And none of the data streams, none of the thoughts, emotions or sensations leave a trace in that pristine, open nature of mind. And so repeating the short moments is really important. And um, what I saw for myself was really quickly how much emphasis I'd given on negative descriptions. And I loved your, your, your question as well, how there is this obsessive focus on, on negativity. And I saw how, how negative I was about myself and towards myself. That this running commentary that was always telling me how I wasn't good enough, how I'd said the wrong thing, I'd done the wrong thing, I, I was just making a mistake, I was wasting my time, other people were better than me, why am I doing this, it's pointless. Always putting myself down, like continuously. And when I began to see this, it, it was so, so painful. And I saw how limiting it was that I really believed that these, these thoughts had this power to, to define me. And, and so what do I do about them? Again, utilise all of these negative descriptions as powerful reminders just to relax as open intelligence. And the habit I had in training myself to repeat these negative descriptions just naturally settled out in these short moments and repeating them. And it's funny when you then see how, how well we've been trained in focusing on that negativity when we begin to apply that to our, our gaining in confidence even in open intelligence. Oh, that was a rubbish short moment. Or oh, that person over there, they're, they're so restful and you know, I'm, I don't even know what open intelligence is anymore. And it, again, that pervasive negativity that's so prevalent in the media, you know, we, we apply it to ourselves and our own experience. And that's just so perfectly outshone just in these short moments that the simplicity is the power. And what I see for myself is that the results of utilising all four of the mainstays are so profound and so obvious that I couldn't give a flying... What's the technical term? Foodie do. <laughs> about what anyone else says or thinks <laughs> about open intelligence or balanced view because the results that I see in my life are so obvious and so practical that it, it doesn't matter to me what anybody else thinks. It is profoundly disappointing when other people do not recognise their own beneficial potency. But what I see for myself is that disappointment, that's simply my desire to want them to know this for themselves. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And um, so really basing your recognition and your confidence in open intelligence on your own direct experience is what is important here. Again and again, we're directed back to our own experience. What's my experience of, of, of this moment right here and right now? What can I say about it? Is open intelligence naturally present? Is all of the data appearing spontaneously and resolving naturally? You decide for yourself. You see what happens when you decide to rely on short moments 
for short moments, for, for repeated many times. What happens when you rely on open intelligence instead of all of the data, instead of all of the thoughts, emotions and sensations? And when you check it out for yourself, that's when your assurance grows because you see the results of doing so. You see the way that these ideas that limited us and seemed to have so much power, ju they just disappear. And it's not until sometimes in hindsight that you see these incredible changes that have come about through this education in the nature of mind. So we have the practice of short moments, which is so powerful and profound. And you can take it with you wherever you are. And if you have then data about taking short moments and begin to describe that, relax again and take another short moment there. That's the only way that you can see for yourself the equalness and evenness of all data. And that open intelligence is always the essence and the source of whatever you're thinking, feeling or sensing. You see for yourself, you become confident in yourself as to the nature of your mind and the nature of reality. And that's so powerful. But for myself, I could see that some of the ideas I had about myself and about other people and about reality were so ingrained. I'd heard them for so long and been telling myself them for so long that I, I needed more than just the short moments. I needed more support. And, and that's where the rest of the mainstays come in. So th there are written trainings and media online that confirm again and again the nature of reality. And the written texts are so powerful because they don't speak about open intelligence. They directly evoke the instinctive recognition of open intelligence in a completely magical way. And it's magical because it cannot be understood intellectually, but it evokes the experience, the direct instinctive recognition which outshines the need for any intellectual speculation because you recognise it instinctively in the direct encounter with everything exactly as it is.